Welcome, everybody. You should be able to see my screen. My Everything checks out on my end, so hopefully you see the screen and you can hear me okay. Many of you, some of you know me, some of you don't. My name is John Sofer, as it says on the screen. Uh, I've been with Kinetics Noise Control for about 18 years, uh, managing the commercial market, the industrial market, and the environmental markets. And uh, today we're going to focus on the industrial market and something I've always worked in my whole life, even though being with Kinetics for 18 years, I've been in the, in the business of acoustics and airflow design and particularly conveying for about 30 years now. So uh, I'm sure my picture kind of shows it from some of you that may not have seen me in a while. But as we progress here, what we wanted to do was take some time, not a lot of your time, but a little bit of time to talk uh, through a case study. We're going to have a few of these uh, over the next few months, but wanted to cover this case study. Uh, it had to do with a uh, woodworking facility and uh, a composite, I say composite, uh, sound enclosures. And the reason I say composite is because it's a, a uh, uh, makeup of various kinetics noise control products. Uh, into one solution. A little bit of background on this project. Uh, the client was a worldwide manufacturer of residential and commercial uh, wood uh, products and materials. The issue was uh, all of a sudden the client came to us because uh, they uh, had a uh, corporate initiative, safety initiative was set requiring the elimination of earplugs. They wanted to get rid of earplugs, PPE, and wherever possible, use engineered controls. The different processes they had in their factory were uh, basically plywood. They were making plywood, as in these pictures here. And the, the majority of the processes were either cutting or sanding or tongue and groove router end treatments. And uh, what we're going to find out is the noisiest pieces of equipment in the in the facility had to do with a, a sanding process and a tongue and groove uh, end treatment process. The project team, when this came to Kinetics and our Kinetics representative, the project team consisted of an independent industrial hygienist, had a Kinetics local representative, the Kinetics engineering team, and then I think the most important is the owner's personnel. I think in any of these solutions, anytime there's a factory, manufacturing facility, or any type of uh, production facility, noise control issue, you want to have a good group of the client's personnel. You want to have good representation from all avenues. One was, of course, the corporate representative. and may have had to do a little bit with the uh, uh, budgeting. You also want either the corporate safety and facility engineers, which many of these large worldwide companies have, or at, or at minimum, and even more importantly, are the safety and facility engineers at the factory. That's, that's what's uh, very important. The area supervisor, that's extremely important because this is their process. This is, this is what they manage. They're managing the flow of work in this area. And the first thing they're going to say is, you're going to do what in my area? You're going to interrupt what we're doing and our efficiencies. So you want to make sure that they have a, a major say in what's going on so they know at every point. Uh, and you can also hear their pain points, which is very important to any solution, successful solution. And then maintenance for sure. I mean, maintenance is there to keep the product up and running. And we definitely don't want to put in a, a solution design a noise control solution that's going to hinder uh, anything they do either on a regular basis or on a uh, an annual basis or if there was any catastrophic failure of equipment you always have to take all that into account when the team that team came together there were considerations we knew there was a corporate noise initiative we knew they wanted to get out of PPE we knew they wanted an engineered controls. We knew Kinetics representative. What was different in this one was besides just supplying a designed noise control system and product, this client actually wanted the representative to install the product as well. And that's something we usually don't get into is installation. We'll talk about that as we move forward. But in this case, it worked out well. The budget, of course, there's always a budget. We want everything, but there's a budget. And then time constraints. They wanted, they had certain shutdown times 
uh, and downtimes that, that something like this nature, this solution could be installed. The project goals were to reduce facility-wide sound levels to 85 dBA. If you really summed it down, that's what they were looking for. The OSHA, old eight hour per day, 85 dBA or less. The successful solution must not interfere with normal personnel traffic and process flow. Kind of like what we talked about that supervisor, you know. <laughs> we have to access this this many times. We don't want anything in the way. We have to take that into account. All equipment must operate at normal temperatures. I think this is one of the most important aspects of noise control, a successful noise control solution. A lot of times it's overlooked. It shouldn't be. Uh, anytime you're going to enclose, say, a piece of equipment, you want to make sure it's not going to overheat. You want to make sure there's not going to be operational problems. Otherwise, you'll come out to the site and let's say it's an enclosure and there's doors on the enclosure. You'll come out to the site and you'll have to look at this beautiful noise enclosure that was designed and installed. And you'll notice these doors are open. And you'll ask them, and you'll hear all this noise emanating out of the enclosure, and you'll ask them, why are they open? And they said, well, it's overheating. You don't want that to happen. So proper ventilation, making sure the equipment operates is the most important in any, whether it's an implant noise control or even an air-cooled chiller outdoors, very important. Quick and easy routine and major maintenance access, that's very important. And then I know I have a, the last one in here, make the facility team heroes in eyes of their management, in the eyes of their management. I, I laugh because, and, I, and we really mean it actually, some people laugh, but we mean it because there's been a few jobs that we've gone out to and, and uh, uh, that people have said, you know, say, how is it working? And say, you know what, you guys really made us heroes because it worked right the first time and uh, we achieved our goal on noise control. Action plan. The first thing that happened on this project to get started, and it's a great place to start, is the client supplied uh, con the Kinetics representative with an independent sound study. This sound study in the factory, around the equipment, plant-wide, was done by an acoustical consulting firm. All right, that, that is very important. They were able to take measurements. Uh, the industrial hygienist was also involved. Uh, to make sure we had the right sound mapping and, and time-weighted averages. So those two, the independent uh, uh, acoustical consultant and the industrial hygienist worked very close together. So when we got there, by the time we got there, they already knew they had a noise problem. And we were able to take all the information we needed to determine the best product system solution for the client. The representative and engineering teams visited the client's facility to review critical noise sources. And I say firsthand, this is important. We read the beautiful report by the acoustical consultant and we know the acoustical consultant was there and so was the independent industrial hygienist. But as a manufacturer of noise control products, we really like to get in there and firsthand experience, watch the flow of the workers to help uh, enforce, uh, reinforce, um, where we may need a door, where we may need maintenance access, where we may need lighting, maybe uh, uh, sprinkler access, maybe ventilation, hot spots. Uh, we want to know this. So firsthand is very important. And I'm sure any acoustical consultant will tell you that as well, that, you know, you got to get in it. You got to experience it. I know there's been a number of times where I'm at a factory and I have to wear my PPE as we're looking for some into a uh, uh, engineered control system. And every now and then I'll pull out one of my earplugs because you kind of got to hear it. You may see it on a sound level meter, but you kind of got to hear it. Is it low frequency? Is it mid frequency? Is it high frequency? Is it really the values that you think that are you're reading on the on the meter? So that's very important. And then the critical locations. Um, are we concerned with 85 dBA right on top of the equipment, right by it when we're maintaining it? or are we interested in 85 dBA somewhere else in the facility? In this case, the critical locations were the walkways, the forklift access areas, and they weren't all right on top of the equipment. So that was important. Do we need the noise level of 85 dBA here, further away from the equipment or close to the equipment? When we look at this uh, slide, it shows the machinery noise levels. And this was taken out of the acoustical consultants um, uh, test, uh, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, field test report. And 
what's really nice about this is there's a tongue and groove machine that's putting these tongue and groove ends on the plywood and there's a sander uh, uh sanding equipment well it's all going to determine you know these noise levels are going to be determined by the density of the materials that they're acting upon and so you really want the noisiest uh applications or situations and what the acoustical consultant was able to do with the industrial hygienist was map this out what kind of material this isn't something that just took a day they they actually in this one they actually spent about two weeks on and off depending what material is being run through this equipment to try to get the maximum noise levels um the nice thing here is we were able to take this out of the report you can't just look at the tongue and groove machine manufacturer and say give us your noise levels uh, per octave band or the sanding machine this is stuff that needs to be taken in the field so with the tongue and groove machine it was 105 dba and the sanding machine was 101 dba those are when they were running full load with the hardest substrate that they could work on and i want to give you a feel in this picture here this slide as to what is 105 dba uh, so when you look at this, you're looking at hammer mills at about 102 dBA, vacuum pumps at about 105, diesel engine generators at about 105, you got air compressors, chop saws at 98, you got pneumatic chippers up at 115, kind of gives you a feel for where these noise levels were and, and uh, why we needed to get them down to 85 dBA. The tongue and groove machine was 105 dBA, reduced what in that case uh full operation we needed to reduce it to 85 dba but it was 19 feet away where the walkway and forklift access were so it wasn't like at three feet or four the farther we get away a lot of times the better due to distance effect the next thing the sanding machine was 101 dba full operation reduced to 85 dba now we're closer there at five feet away Kinetics proposed and designed uh, to design and supply of enclosure systems of a combination of Kinetics noise control products. So we took a lot of our products and uh, uh, figured out the best solution. And we'll talk about that a little bit. The Kinetics local representative, when I said we normally don't supply installation, we're more product design and product supply. Um, in this case, uh, the local representative was able to work with a local mechanical contractor, a friend of theirs that they work with, and uh, in this case, instead of selling uh, the rep representative, taking the installation and, and handling it themselves, they were able to get the client directly in touch and introduced to the mechanical contractor and ended up letting the client work directly with the mechanical contractor, backing out installation. It doesn't have to be that way, but in the end, it actually worked out well because this local mechanical contractor ended up about a year later bidding uh, to take all the maintenance and service uh, on for the company, and they won that bid. So it's just how, funny how all things work together. Quilted Barrier Composite was one of the products that we used. Now, man, Kinetics Noise Control manufactures lots of noise control products. We've been in business since 1958. Uh, very good company. Many of you know us, uh, and we appreciate that. If you don't, we'd love to talk to you about our company. But we manufacture these uh, composite curtains. And if you look at the, uh, the lower right picture, you'll see a, uh, uh, a dark gray line, horizontal line in the center. That's mass loaded vinyl. We call that mass loaded vinyl because it has a, a, a heavier density than you would expect. You can get that in either one pound per square foot, two pound per square foot. Uh, you can get in, and, and of course, the more mass, the better sound blocking capabilities you'll have. Now on each side of that piece of material is a one inch thick, in this case, a one inch thick fiberglass. And we quilt that. And so it looks like there's two different models up top, but it looks like the models in that top picture. So two things happen. You got a noise source on one side, you got noises sound, it's energy. And as that noise propagates and hits the surface, it's, some of it's gonna be absorbed within the open cell fiberglass. It's going to be reduced slightly that sound energy then it's going to impinge on that mass that one pound or two pound per square foot mass a lot of that sound energy is going to get blocked and then any energy that gets through which there will be energy that gets through these are not perfect uh, blockers or absorbers on the other side some of that sound energy will get absorbed again so in the end you get a composite effect of absorption and sound blocking 
The next thing we use, we also use the product, which is our noise block panels. Noise block panels are rigid panels like you see here, typically four inch thick or two inch thick. In this case, we use two uh, four inch thick panels. Perforated steel shell one side, solid si uh, shell the other side. It's gonna absorb M block sound and different media fills, typically a fiberglass, long strand fiberglass media fill under about a 10% compression we use. I wanted to tell you too on this, uh, uh, the solution then consisted of two enclosures, two four-walled or four-sided enclosures with a roof. This is what we needed to meet the noise levels uh, that we specified at various distances. The enclosures were 16 foot tall. If you look at the enclosure on the left, those two long walls that look like they're extending beyond the normal width of the enclosure, they are because we're actually taking curtains and biparting. So we're opening up those whole, the entire sides of those, of that enclosure. The nice thing with kinetics, because we're big in the seismic restraint, vibration isolation and wind restraint and manufacture those products and designs as well. We have our own structural engineering team on staff. And that's one of the wonderful things I really like when I came to work for kinetics was when we do barrier walls, outdoor barrier walls and plant enclosures, whether curtains or steel, we have our own structural engineering team on staff. So we always we always design these systems to be bolt together. They come out to the field, they're bolt together. Uh, they can carry the proper, they're designed per the proper IBC code adopted for the area. And if we need to stamp them, we got all 50 states covered on uh, professional engineering stamps for structural calcs. Solution also consisted, I already said, the, the rigid panels we talked about. And the neat thing for the panels is we used them on the roof. The roofs of these enclosures are made of the rigid noise block panels. And the nice thing with that is it supported, it, it gave a nice support for ventilation for those enclosures. We had to have forced ventilation. They also had lighting that could be attached to the underside very easily, surface mounted lighting for the area. Um, in this case, a structural steel support system with double roller track was used for those large 16 foot high by 18 and a half foot wide uh, sides that needed on the sander machine enclosure. Composite sound curtains consisting, in this case, we used a two pound per square foot mass. We needed that on this particular application to get the noise. And so all the walls of these enclosures are the, uh, the composite curtain system uh, with a two pound per square foot mass loaded vinyl sandwich between two layers of quilt. The tongue and groove process required a window on the roof that not just lighting and ventilation, but a window. They were actually looking down over the process. And so we installed a, a window. And you can see here, this is the sander enclosure. The sander enclosure is very interesting. And I, and I, and I, I left this here. If you look very closely at the sides, you'll see a, on the screen, you'll see it'll say on the right, four inch STL wall panels. Those are our rigid wall panels. This was originally to have rigid wall panels on two sides and the roof. And then the walls that open up where the curtains by part and get completely out of the way for service and maintenance, uh, those were gonna be this, that curtains. Well, here's what happened was the budget, we were a little over budget. So we went back and we reviewed this and we were able to do curtains on all four walls and just the solid panels on the roof. And on this roof too, it's very interesting because you'll see these little lifting lugs. So if they did need to remove the roof, they could pull the roof off by the overhead crane and a spreader via the lifting lugs. The nice thing is, is you could take all the panels off of this and the structural support frame will still stand. Gives them a lot of flexibility. On this one was the tongue and groove enclosure. You'll actually see real photos of these as we move through this presentation. But if you look at this, you'll see some lines there. They look like uh, dashed lines. And those are actually strip curtains that you'll see. You, you've seen strip curtains like on freezer doors and freezer, you know, in and out of areas. Even I went to some of the box stores where they separate some of their produce. Uh, they'll have some freezer doors. Freezer doors are basically a clear mass loaded vinyl. You can get them with different overlaps. We like to overlap 100%. So when you have, so there's no, no leakage or flanking of noise. And it's nice because 
for many, many years now, at least the last 12 to 15 years, we have very good uh, clear view mass loaded vinyl, which which doesn't yellow. Years back, it used to yellow over time, get brittle. That hasn't been for many, many years. It's a much better product. The advantages of the kinetic solution. And uh, what I like here is it's all the products backed by applicable ASTM sound standards. So, so, you know, that's the nice thing. In order for us to design these systems, to work with the acoustical consultant, the industrial hygienist, and the owner, to let them know what our solution is going to do per their recommendations as well, um, we need to know how the product's going to perform both in absorption and sound blocking and, and our products independently tested. Also, these products are, are, are fire tested as well. So we have all that information, everything they would want to know um, at the factory. The nice thing here too is a single manufacturer supplied the whole thing. Single manufacturer, same engineering team, representative, everybody worked together from discovery through installation, taking the knowledge of the industrial uh, hygienist and the acoustical consultant. A perfect balance, uh, I always say here, a perfect balance of lower and higher priced products. Yeah, some products, maybe the rigid panels are a little more costly than the than the curtain panels. On the other hand, though, the rigid panels offer more structural support that can work with the structural frame, support frame. When we combine these together, we want to get the most cost-effective solution, and that's what we have here. And I got my little balancing thing there. It says best safety compliance on the right, uh, balanced against cost. And I think that's very, very important. And what we always try to do, and by making all the products, we don't care what product you purchase or want us to design with, we're going to use a combination of all uh, when given the opportunity to give you the best price for the best noise control. Now, some nice pictures. The tongue and groove machine, this was 16 feet tall. Uh, on the upper left, you can see some uh, of the strip curtains there. Uh, then on the right, you can see how we fit everything around. You know, the, 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 uh, it's a floor mounted uh, frame system. Uh, everything is fit around their, their processes when we need cuts. That's the nice thing with curtains. The next thing you can see is the inside of that same enclosure. You can see the nice surface. We were able to put the surface mounted lights. Um, there was a penetration through the roof uh, for the piping. They were able to, in this case, take the piping apart, put our enclosure up, then hook it back together. If that piping couldn't be removed, we would actually put a roof joint there. So then it could come together, leave the process as is, and we fit it together while the process is operating. You have the window and the roof. And even in the upper right corner where I exploded view, there's a sprinkler head. Very important. This was the sander enclosure. You're actually looking at one wall on the right there that would actually buy part. You could buy part. There's a double track system. Actually, that was a triple track system and with a frame so they were on trolleys and you could actually buy part that whole uh half the panels one way half the panels the other another picture of the sander enclosure that gives you a little more close-up of the uh you see in the uh background on the right you see the overhang and then here are the two enclosures together it looks nice it really does um you know there's uh we tried to fit everything around you can see in the right, I'm sorry, the left, uh, kind of the middle left on that leftmost enclosure, you can see there's a cut there for the conveyor system to come through. Uh, and, and for all the, I left this in here, for the acoustical consultants and uh, industrial hygienists in the, in the crowd today, you'll see in the lower right-hand corner, there's actually a sound level meter sitting down there with a windscreen on it. And... Uh, and everybody's uh, it, that was funny during this installation it, it, the consultant was there the acoustical consultant the industrial hygienist they were all taking these readings and comparing notes and we didn't have iphones uh back then so it, we weren't able to in this case to do this um, we've done a number of these this is the one and, and and i said back then the reason is it's hard to get good factory photos of your solutions there's a lot of secrecy people don't want pictures taken this was one uh, we've done this numerous times over the years, but this is one that we we're actually able to get some good photos. If you look here, the achievement, I call it achievement, not results, but what we achieved. Uh, the black uh, uh, line, curve, 
is 105 dBA. That was taken from the, uh, the acoustical consultant's report. In blue, even though this one we were more concerned about 19 feet away, in blue it shows you what it would be, what the noise levels were after the installation of the enclosure around the tongue and groove machine. That was the one with the strip curtains. Uh, it shows you it was 87 dBA at 5 feet, and at 19 feet it was 85 dBA. Now it was very interesting because we would thought it would have been a little less at 85 dBA, but than 85 dBA, but there were other noise sources in the factory that brought that back up. So basically, we brought ours down so we could remain at 85 dBA. Just how noise affects each other at different parts of the facility. And then in this case, we had 101 dBA taken out of the acoustical consultant's report. And then we were able in the blue line to show you how we reduced the noise levels uh, to 85 dBA at five feet for the sander enclosure. In the last page, I, I leave you with a couple different things. There's a lot here, but if you go to the Kinetics website and you look for the industrial market and the environmental market, uh, you're going to find a lot of information, a lot of data, a lot of reports, a lot of pictures. Uh, so go there. I did put it here on the screen. Uh, our rep locator, our industrial email, which is industrial sales at kineticsnoise.com, product web page, market web page. And then one more picture, I have to leave you with one more picture. And people say, we can't do anything. We're wearing earplugs, we can't do anything. Well, look at this. Look at these great places to put noise control curtains. Many places have on the uh, left side, they'll have these safety cages. What a great place to add, making sure ventilation is fine. This is open top, but what a great place to add our composite barrier absorptive quilt. Tie it on there through uh, nylon zip ties, through grommets. We cut them the size. And then if you look at the equipment, this is a slitter. It was a cutting piece of equipment. If you look on the right side, you see these one, two, three, four predominant, uh, and then there's a few more down below, but four predominant sections of curtain. But what happens is when they get in there to service, they can just easily move those out of the way, either take them down, move them aside, whatever. So. You can either fit close to your noise noise source, which sometimes more costly than being able to if back away and just put a barrier wall around the whole system. But sometimes you don't have a room. They want this clean look, which you see here. So I thank you for listening. Uh, this is kind of a one-way presentation. So uh, anybody can get a hold of me if you want to uh, let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them. Uh, contact us. But uh, uh, thanks for joining and everybody stay safe and have a great week. Thank you.